Well, this morning on the dish, and I'm certain he's going to love this, one of the coolest <laughs> chefs around, Jonathan Waxman, is so cool, he's been called the Eric Clapton of chefs. That's, that's top stuff. It is top stuff, and you've seen him, by the way, on Bravo's Top Chef. He recently signed on to be culinary advisor to Rosa Mexicana restaurants. And next month, he heads to Austin for the Food and Wine Festival, and he's here with his ultimate dish, skirt steak tacos with guacamole. And great to have you with us, Chef. Good morning. Great to be here. So tell us about the ultimate dish. What do we have on our plate? Well, you know, this is a a thing that I actually do at home. Uh, my kids love this. And it's funny that I do this little marinade with uh, soy sauce mm. and chilies and lime. I marinate the steak for about an hour beforehand and just throw it on the barbecue and slice it. And it really it takes on this whole new development of flavors when you have the soy. The soy kind of adds a saltiness and adds texture to it, but also helps caramelize the meat a little bit. It's delicious. And, and I know folks are taking, uh, taking notes out here. So what's the one tip, if you will, for making the perfect taco? Well, the, I think the thing is, it's a combination of flavors. Here you have some guacamole, which is, I like a chunky. Mm -hmm. And I made a little pineapple salsa. And it's, the pineapple salsa is, is kind of a little, wonderful little riff on how to making a fresh salsa, but I cook the pineapple with ginger and jalapeno chilies. Mm. So, you know, it's spicy, but it's sweet, and it has that little texture to it. it. It's lovely. And then a little jicama to give it the little crunch. I like that. And you have two sides, too. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, my restaurant, Barbuda, we do uh, a raw crudy salad, and it's raw vegetables. And uh, cauliflower is in season now. Uh, we do it with shaved asparagus. But it's a simple salad to make at home. We do it with Brussels sprouts, and it changes the Brussels sprouts to a really edible dish. We, cauliflower, all you do is shave it, Slice it, however you want to do it. Toss it with a little bit of spicy olive oil, some cheese, a little bit of lemon. That's it. Delish. Sea salt. And that's it. And the last ah. dish is these little beans. And these are uh, dried fava beans. And when I uh, first was going to Italy a lot, uh, I loved the way they did beans. And mm. they cooked them in water and roasted garlic. And the beans take on this whole texture. And they're really luxurious. And it makes it sort of a poor person's meal done elegantly. It so is help me understand, now, you grew up in a Jewish household in, in California, of course, right. but to have this, uh, this passion for a, a, a Italian food, if you will, Barbuto, of course, we know all about that. So where did the, uh, the passion for Italian cooking come from? Well, I grew up in San Francisco in the Bay Area, and uh, going to Italian restaurants was one of the great things we did as kids. And we loved driving across the bridge and going to these places like the Vanessi's, which is sadly no longer there. And when I was uh, in cooking school in Paris in, in the 70s, I went to all these places like Paul Bocuse and the Trois Gros Brothers, but I made this little side trip to Liguria, to, mm. to Santa Margarita, and I fell in love with Italy. And uh, my neighbor upstairs is Fabrizio Ferri, the fashion photo photographer, cool. and his wife, Alessandra Ferri, the ballet dancer, uh, owned this place called Industria, and Fabrizio goes, we should do an Italian restaurant together. And I said, I don't do Italian food, I do my little shtick. Mm. He goes, you know what, you cook like my, my Roman grandmother, cook simply from your heart, that's what Italian food's mm. all about, and that's how Barbuda came about. I love how, though, how you came about as a chef, because here you are, you're, you're going to be a musician, you're a trombone player in the 70s, and all of a sudden you make the switch and you say, I have to pursue this. Well, you know, trombone uh, players were not that in demand. The disco <laughs> started in the 70s, and so my father goes, you got to get a real job. So I actually started selling Ferraris in Alfa Romeo. It's like the weirdest <laughs> thing in the world. Wow. And uh, the guy who owned Whoa. the Ferrari place, uh, his wife said, why don't you go to cooking school? You talk about food all the time. So I took a cooking course in San Francisco from uh, Tom Marie Cooking School, and she goes, you should go to Paris and go to cooking school and become a chef. In those days, no one became a chef. It was, wasn't a really wonderful thing to do as a profession. I went to Paris, and I fell in love, and it was the greatest thing. For me, it was just amazing. Let's talk a bit more about the uh, Ferraris, okay? Give me sure. the, the one ingredient that you must have in your kitchen is. Well, it's funny, you know. I, I you know, it's my one. Of, I have hidden sort of kitchen pleasures, and butter is number one. Mm. Chocolate's okay. number two, butter. by the way. <laughs> butter makes everything better. Okay, one last thing we do here. You sign the plate. Oh, great. And as you're signing it, if you could have this meal with anyone, who would it be? You know, it's funny, uh, uh, JB and I were talking earlier, I, I love J.J. Johnson as a trombone player. Ah. And if I could sit down with him and, and just, you know, have a meal with him, uh, he sadly passed away, but it, that would be a wonderful thing to do. Um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, as a musician, you always admire people. As, as chefs, we always have our people that we want to be with. And Alice Waters wouldn't be a bad person to have a meal with as well. well I just we, want to borrow those pipes of yours just one time. Yeah. <laughs> That's its own. It's okay. Love having you with us. Thank you so much, Chef.